Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of the Hey Corner Crew podcast. I am your host, JJ Lang, and with me, as always, are my two wonderful co-hosts. First, you know him, you love him, Nate, the little Gunfas. What up, we here? And also with us is Dan, the Statman Scully. Except sorry, wait, time out. My name is Sam, Sam. the Datman Dully. I'm sorry, <laughs> we, we have to correct that Dan's name. For, I was for, walking. For those who are confused by Dan's name, if you're watching on YouTube, Nate, Nate texted us earlier asking us what time we were recording. I said yes, and he re- he responded with Sam question mark, and my response was, "Who the you know what is Sam?" <laughs> because there is no Sam in our group chat. I was walking and I mistyped. Give me a break. I wish no. I had a screenshot of that before you changed it. That would have been funny. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, we're going to do things a little bit differently this week. Uh, since the ladies had a bye, we're going to talk about them last. Uh, we are going to talk about the men first because we have two games to go over. Um, interesting games, to say the least. Um, I think Saturday was going to have a little bit of an interesting discussion. But I'm going to pitch it to Nate, and we're going to get started on Mercyhurst. The Lakers, the team that RAT ended their season last year in the playoffs, came to town. Um, always good games, and I think we got. I think we got. I think this weekend fit the bill. Uh, this this is, RIT Mercyhurst always has good hockey games. Um, the boys got going uh, in the first period with John Franco Casero. Wash, rinse, repeat. All he does is score goals. Um, Yes, which is my favorite rule in college hockey, by the way. <laughs> um, in front of 3,925, what a crowd. What a Massive crowd. crowd. Massive um, crowd. Good crowd. Other two guys. Shut up! <laughs> Dan, it was go to the RIT games or be killed. Those were our two options. Yeah. So. You mean go to the Amherst game or be killed? Yeah. <laughs> yes it, it would have been go to the RIT game and get killed or <laughs> that's very true sorry my go life to the Amherst good. game and not be kicked out of our current living situations <laughs> both of our lives were very much yeah. that, uh, so. huh. the Tigers would take that one nothing lead going into the intermission and then holy somebody took a lighter to the powder keg in the second period <laughs> um, oh my goodness <laughs> Everything Not is only, happening. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I So my phone was just exploding. <laughs> <laughs> the CHN notifications like I'm getting was like, oh, my God. Like, what the hell is going on over there right now? Uh, Mercyhurst would tie it up to 42 into the second. And then Matthew, I'm hot as the sun wild. Gets another one less than a minute later. Then about a minute and a half later, Gonzo, who's finally back to form, it seems like. He, I think he's finally healthy. You know, I think his injury was Gonzo just a little nagging back. thing, but he needed one to get going. Um, so did Tyler Mahan, um, who added a, another goal about another minute and a half later. <laughs> um, yeah, my, yeah, I was sitting there not too happy, at least the Amherst one. Um <laughs> Hey, good Amherst game, at least. I would have rather been at JPC. Um, anyway, um, Crossley Stewart, first goal as a Tiger. How get many... off a of Mercyhurst skate. Yes. Hey, hey, it doesn't matter how it goes in. No. Maybe Still not the pr- Probably not how he drew it up, but. What do you mean? That was totally on purpose. All right. Oh, yeah. How many first years without a goal now? Was he I think all of him? our first years have goals now. Yeah, because Puka Kusa had one in game one. Yep. Everybody's on the board. Was is Crossley hurt right now? Like, why was he not in Saturday? Uh because shuffle. yeah, it was just a lineup shuffle. Okay, interesting. Get guys in, you know. Wayne's still messing around with the lineup, I think, too. Um you usually don't see don't a like set. It. You usually don't see eh, I don't mind it. You don't usually see a set lineup until late January, early February when things are kind of hammered out. Which, hey, figure out if guys are working with working well with others and it'll work. So, 
This team is fine. I, I don't care what to do with the lineup. They're they're so deep that it doesn't matter who goes in and who comes out, really. It's insane. No, it does not. Um, speaking of that, Doug Scott's been one of my favorite players to watch this year. He is all over the place, and he's going to score. He's going to get If one. he scored on Saturday, I think the roof would have blown off. The roof the would have come center. off the building. I th- um, People would have been physically running out to give him a hug. Like, Yes. He, he, I, I think if you ask the general populace of RIT right now who your favorite player is, they probably would either say Scarfoni or Dougie Scott. <laughs> Do we put a caveat in the uh, fans' choice word this year? Don't vote for Tommy Scarfoni because we can't have a three year winner. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I mean, we could just disqualify him. <laughs> don't vote. I don't for want to Tommy do that. Scarfone. Do Sorry, you keep winning. We're going to take you out of this. <laughs> yes. Um, Scurves is still always going to get votes, even. <laughs> forever he will he will get a vote forever as long as sarah wrote is there to do the vote the physical vote. and then if Even sarah wrote's not there i'm gonna just make sure i'll just I do it for her <laughs> <laughs> yeah right um penalties again um didn't really hurt us mercy Hurst went 0 for 5 on the power play rat went 0 for 1 on one penalty in the first period from mercy Hurst. at least one power play um looks like a couple uh matching roughing minors yeah, that was fun. All over the place. <laughs> <laughs> Two roughing miners on each team at the same time. <laughs> fun. Wish I was there. <laughs> um, can I just say, um, I think Mercy Hurst found a gem in their goaltender, Simon. Um, yeah. How, how do you say his name? I don't even know. I've got a line sheet somewhere. Yes, thank you, Dan. This is why we have you on the podcast. JJ, you keep freezing, bro. Your face right now is amazing. Uh, Buchler. Simon Buchler. Yep. Simon Buchler. Yep. My, um, I don't know what's going on. My internet is... I Garbage <laughs> again. We know. We get it. Good Hello, Lord. waste when management. Move? Please come pick up JJ's internet. Yes, good anyway, lord, can't stand it. Um, he made fifteen saves on Friday in about thirty-two minutes of work, and then turned it around. Saturday. All on one goal. <laughs> Hang on, hey, we'll get this Saturday. Um, Tommy twenty-two saves. Get it? Move on. RIT had twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Uh, no, wrong. Sorry, math. Thirty-four shots. Um, good game, good win. It was a fifth in the row, another three points. Um, another three points in the conference standings, which is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, points, points, points. That's kind of the story of the game, which I think that's why Saturday's result is a little bit more okay because we've gotten a lot of conference points so far. And not that you want to lose home games, but you can kind of like I've always said if you sweep your home series and you win 50% on the road, you're in pretty good shape. Yes. And we've only given up one conference point on the road this year. So unfortunately, we've lost two conference games at home, but we won't talk about it. Um, well, we will. We'll talk about the second one in a second. Um Carter Wilkie's still a cheat code in the face off dot. This yeah. man, this man does not lose faceoffs. I I don't get it. He doesn't he's lose more than he wins. every single one he's in. Like, oh my god, because he's good. <laughs> yes, I'm well aware he's good. But just, really, <laughs> how is he this good? Is sorry, I'm I'm just voting. speaking facts. Um, I would love to know where he is in the country in faceoff percentage. I'm sure we can find it, Dan. Now that you've mentioned it, Skelly's probably going to go try and find it now. <laughs> he's going to find it, and I believe he's going to find it. He's a man of mission. If it weren't for a lot of guys at bigger schools, I'd put him in the top five, 10 for Hobie Baker right now, Carter Wilkie. Um, not that he's not going to be a top 10 because we're going to get him in the top 10 this year. Oh, he is 100% going to get By votes. voting, that should be a actually that should be coming votes. out soon. soon. Relatively soon. Yeah. I remember one year I got a room full of eighth graders to do it in high school. They voted for Matt Garbowski. 
It was legendary. <laughs> no, that's funny. Walked into the hockey coach's room and uh, wrote it on the board. Vote for Garbowski. And he said, this is your homework assignment. And you need to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> you need to do it now. <laughs> um, Yeah, good win Friday. Take it. Anything else before we move on to the frustrating one? No, I think you kind of covered it. I just more want to talk still about looking Saturday. for a face-off percentage. I found it. It's just that the Hockey East website, which has the national stats too, is being kind of slow. Is being stupid. Is being like my internet. Well, that's kind of. I didn't know the Hockey East website had the national stats. That's nice. Why does that? Why do they have it? Not USCHO. At I'm sure. That, I'm sure USCHO probably has it, but I. Whatever. He's, he's probably up fumble there. with the pivot table right now. He's probably up there. Um, yeah. And then there was Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Let me start by saying this. We played as good of a game as you can play. Yes. Very in true. a loss. I wouldn't even go that far. I just think there was nothing, general. nothing we could have done in this game to change any of the outcome. Well, there's one thing you could have done, but it wouldn't have ended well. <laughs> Maybe be a little bit better on the power play, but hey, you could have just that's part of it, Simon right? over and that would have probably solved every problem, but that's not something that we want to condone doing. I won't tell you what I was saying up top then. <laughs> Nate's probably yelling to crush him. <laughs> you have, listen, an, extra, before we you have start, an extra skater. Listen. Props to that guy. He played out of his mind on Saturday. What? And jumping ahead, he 100% deserved Rookie of the Week this week. I don't care what anyone else says. I'm honestly shocked he wasn't both that and goaltender of the week because Guy made, Busting got it for Air Force. Oh my God. He made 21 saves in the second period. Dude, he made 51 overall. Like, holy crap. On 94 shot attempts. Like, you want like you want to sit there and talk about video game numbers. There's 51 right there. That that That's something you do in, like, a create-a-player game. And that included They're really, multiple oh saves on a, a five on three that our IT couldn't yes. score. Oh my god! Overall, I'm happy with how we played. I'm just frustrated that we couldn't we you we couldn't buy a goal. Listen, no, I was I'm, using I'm, that I'm, phrase I'm, more than once up in yep, the press box. I used Saturday. it all night. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna look over what Matt Campbell said on the Witter post game. There is not a lot to be upset about from Saturday. Obviously, they lost. That sucks. But at the same time, they played really well. They just ran into a goaltender whose response was not today. That's literally what I was. That you, you couldn't buy a goal. He wasn't. Nothing was going to go by him. He's making saves from his freaking side and kicking pucks out of the way. And I'm just like, by the time the third started, I was honestly sitting there going, "We need." It, it, but when the sorry, when the second period ended with them up one nothing still, the back of my head, I'm like, this is done. If we were gonna score, we would have done it by now. There is no chance we're coming out and scoring twice on this guy in one in one period. No way. And the other part of me is somebody next to me was like, just score one, go to overtime. And I'm like, you're not beating them in overtime. This dude's not gonna give up two goals today. I'm sorry. It's it wasn't gonna happen. I think the only way we get him is if we do get to the shootout. Because then it's a one on one and our guys are sick. Yeah. Um, but that I mean they blocked twenty two shots. They might Mercyhurst it, this game, this these two these two games may have set the stage for Mercyhurst to do some crazy stuff the rest of the year. Cause who like if they they got something special with this kid if he's able to continue to play like they had that. one shot in the third period. Listen, went, like it, defensively, two, we, were, two, we, two, we had them. Two, two, sorry, we two, had them defensively. Winner. There was just a, I mean, m- minus the seven hundred ninety-five penalties we took. But besides that, like they took more. They, I know they took a bunch of penalties. Like 
No, that, no, we that, took a that, bunch at the end. Sorry, is this statue right? No. Oh, okay. Dan, did you mess up? Hang on. No, we're good. It. How many of those? Five of those came in the last four minutes. There were yeah. between the two teams. That there was were nine penalties called in the third, and, and the it felt like on... we had a stretch there that we could not keep either team out of the box. It was well, a penalty like, here, a penalty there, a penalty here, a penalty. It was there. like penalty. The inter, like the interference penalty. penalty. Aiden. It was one he had to take. They were going. They were going to score on an open net, and he, oh yeah. damn, he takes a penalty and what? It's still four on four with an empty net. Whoa. Hasn't changed since the last 30 seconds. That that was like, a smart penalty. That you have to take that penalty. Yes. Absolutely. I, I hate can't that it was Aiden, that. but he was the guy that was there. Because right. you had to give yourself a chance. There was no time left anyway at that point, but no. That game was done by that point. It was over. Um okay, USCHO is also being slow, so I'm gonna say it's probably my computer this time. Everyone's having internet problems today. I mean, we won 50 of 76 faceoffs. Like, I, well, there is nothing, there is nothing more we could have done. We straight up dominated them all game. Their goaltender in, just was relentless. That's the problem. In That's every all aspect of the game, except the one that matters. Yeah. Well, I said in and- Discord after the game, this could have been out of control very quickly after, after mm-hmm. the first period. Because we were just shot, 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 and it was, and it wasn't like the shots sucked. They were getting good. Yes, thank you for that. They yeah, were getting that's good what I was quality doing shot after. drop. Now some, yeah, like, but I, I'm sitting there going, if this is the dude from the night before, from before Simon goes in and net for them, this is probably a four nothing game by the time the first is over. Like this game could have been out of control quickly. And I'll also say, damn good game. Very entertaining. Like, if you're just a hockey fan, that was a great game yeah. to watch. And, Dan, I'll speak to what you, well, for you said. Also, us. like, this is kind of what you look for with college hockey. Yeah, if you're yeah. not us, it's a great game. And, well, no, and- it, no, if you're not Mercyhurst, it's a great game. Because imagine just getting pat- – like, I don't know how amazingly frustrated I would have been if, it, if this was the other way around. Even with a lead, I would have been losing my sh- – Mm, oh, losing my mind! You were close. <laughs> I was close. I caught no myself. cigar. Um, no, you're totally right. Losing, I would have been losing my mind. Like, what are we doing? Like, great, we're winning, but at and some point we're gonna give up the, the goal, and they didn't. But and here's the question now with Mercyhurst: They've been kind of eh so far this year. Like, they have seven points in the standings now, but it's now you've got, them. but now you've chucked this kid in. Is he gonna is he gonna steal them games and carry them like because at this point th- their older goaltender is poo poo he's no good. I I think he's you obviously that bad though that's the thing. Is that better than <laughs> he, Simon he had Buckler an off or... night Friday. He had an off night, JJ. <laughs> but sure, but I don't know. I I, I look at their conference game. I wish I had four stats before. Games. They've went, like they played four. Yes, they beat us, but it's also just kind of like. Their record overall is two five and two, right? So I'm kind of just like, it, it's going to depend. I, at this point, I think if Simon, this new kid, doesn't play the, for their next series for some reason, their coach is absolutely on some kind of bananas. He's just nuts. Like I think this dude, this dude, straight up owns the entire thing now. That is his goal to lose at this point. Did we know Mercyhurst had a local guy? Ryan Coffin no. from Rochester, New York. Did we not know that? Uh, that's on us. I, I don't, don't think remember. he. Pl- I don't think he. That's played. on us. Eh, whatever. Because I'll tell you right now, I have a hunch we'll see them again. Honestly, hey, really? he... Lo- local guy, yeah. Ryan Coughlin. Yeah. They're showing him as being from, from Charlotte, North Carolina, on the line sheet. <laughs> I wonder if. He's like he was, from Rochester, but he says he's from Charlotte. Or, or he was born here and moved there and lived there most of his oh, life. Yeah. Or yeah. the other way around. Could be that too. Um, no, I, I think depending on how their goaltender situation goes the rest of the year, we could very well see them again. Well, we will because they're on our schedule. Oh, I know that, but I mean, I mean, I knew that was coming. <laughs> I mean, I, I, 
I mean, nope. after the away nope. series, like I could nope. see them making a. I could see them making a run in the, could. In the playoffs. I mean, hey, goal, you saw it with Holy Cross. Goaltending can win you playoff games. And that, that this dude reminded me of Jason Grandy. That's why I'm saying that. That was one of the best goaltending performances I have ever seen. Oh, my God. Undoubtedly. And we get to watch Tommy Scarfoni every game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. And that was one of the best goalie performances I've ever seen. Oh, and that wow. kid was out of his mind. And he's going to be a problem for the next three and a half years. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> Let's hope this is just like a fluke game and he's actually just garbage. <laughs> well, right, and we'll see. And we'll find I mean, out he, going forward. He held us to one goal in half the game. On I mean, Friday. He, he's got some so, eyes on him now. So, yeah, so we'll see. I now there's tape, you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, we'll see. I, I don't know how he doesn't start their next game. I don't mind it, but um, no, it's like you got to start. To. You got to start him, right? Like, you can't. No, you can't let him do that and then tell him, "Oh, go back to the bench. The clipboard is yours again." No, you can't do that yeah. to him. That's demoralizing. Well, hey, well, the one th- one of the big things with Mercyhurst was their goaltending, and they figured it out. So yeah, I mean, good on them. Uh, Dan, do we want to do scores around the league real quick before we talk uh, about the I goals? Was... Before we get there, I just wanted to say, you know, it. I think Coach Wilson summed it up pretty well. If if our off night is out shooting a team fifty something to fourteen, we'll take the off night. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> He's right. I I just look at this team and like they're not playing their best hockey right now, which is honestly a good thing because if I don't want to play our best hockey in November. No, I want to play our best hockey in March, but oh, if this is, <laughs> I mean, if not our best oh, hockey boy. is 17 <laughs> points in the standings, I'll take that. If our not best hockey is 51 to 14 shot wise. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> a hundred shots a night. Oh, hundred shots a weekend. I take that. <laughs> Oh my god, it'd be insane. <laughs> Welcome to RAT, bro. We'll outshoot you by 40 and you'll still win. <laughs> Continue. So AIC swept Holy Cross in a Thursday, Friday home and home. 4 1 Thursday, 3 2 Friday. What is going on with them, man? I don't mind seeing them be bad. I don't know why you're complaining about that. Maybe maybe the AHA poll voters knew something we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. <laughs> You know, because they're Division One hockey coaches, and we're just three guys who watch hockey. Yeah, we're just three there's... clowns that watch hockey. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I I don't think we need Ed on to explain why the three of us don't get votes in the poll. <laughs> I think we should ask him why we, we can't should. get votes in the poll. I put, our, I put us number one every week just to boost our poll. <laughs> and that's why you don't get a vote. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Sacred Heart sweeps Canisius at 4 1 and 3 2. Yay. Air Force wins the Battle of the Service Academies 4 3 in overtime on Friday and then 4 0 Saturday. Army came back Army... in that game, too. That was Army's oh. first point of the year, too. Army was down 3 0. And I'm pretty sure it was in the third with eight minutes left. Yeah, Tied the eight. game with 43 seconds left. Yep. And and Air Force won the game with less yeah. than 20 seconds left in overtime. <laughs> Can we talk about that jersey matchup real quick? Because that was sick. Okay. The Air Force all-white jerseys are disgusting. You are the only person that likes them. I'm sorry. I want to put that out here right now. I showed those jerseys to like nine people, and they were like, these are gross. Who made those? The all white ones, no, those did not work. They needed some blue in them. Well, good thing they weren't all white. Say gray pants, you idiot. You know what? They still looked ugly. <laughs> they still my looked one, ugly. My one gripe with Army was the uh, white gloves with the all green. That was kind of weird, but whatever. They should have been yellow gloves. 
the the, the green is sick. They need to use more of that. Yeah, the green that was, was cool. That was the green was thing. cool. I'll give you that. They need more of that. All right. Also, they need to keep scheduling them to play the weekend of Veterans Day every year, those two teams. Like, why we have not been doing that historically every season is mind-boggling to me, but all right. Uh, Bentley sweeps Niagara. Uh, 6-2, Good. 2-1. Bombs. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of the poo-poo team. <laughs> a, oh, three goals in the first for Bentley in that Friday game. Bentley, man. They're scaring me now. I don't like it. Culture change, man. That's what it does. And AJ yeah, Hodges. I, I, I would know that. Look at my football team right now. I'm sorry. Who's your football team? About to be uh, higher than you. It's today. Like. Today. Nope. Nope. Yep. Can't do it. Can't do mm-hmm. it. Can't mm-hmm. do it. Robert Morris had... Uh, they went up to Alaska Anchorage. I don't. I don't want to say they split, but they didn't get swept. Three-two uh, <laughs> for the Sea Wolves on Friday, and a two-two tie on Saturday. Did they actually do a non-conference shootout? I don't think so. Yes, I don't think so they did. Did they? You're both wrong. Who won it? Oh, uh, oh RMU. What else does it know? Yeah, yeah, there you go. There you go. That's good. Yes. <laughs> you take it or leave you it. didn't lose. You didn't go all the way up there and lose both games. I. <laughs> hey, what's the number? Hey, the number one rule is college hockey. In college hockey, is don't lose on Saturday. So they didn't. They didn't lose on Saturday when they were. I don't want to figure out how many miles from Pittsburgh. I got you. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I got you. I did find out it was a two-day bus ride, though, because we were joking about that at the bar on Friday night. (laughs) Imagine if they had to take a bus. Welcome back to the segment of Nate's Geography Corner, where we figure out how far a team travels in one weekend. (laughs) Holy cross. He's really good. I love you doing this. Has a home-and-home with Bentley this weekend at Holy Cross Friday at 7 at Bentley Saturday at 4. Sorry, 4.05. Maps had to zoom all the way out. (laughs) (laughs) It is 4,034 miles from Pittsburgh to Anchorage. It would take you two days and 17 hours to drive. I would rather just not go (laughs) and just forfeit both games. Walking directions are not available. Boo. (laughs) I wonder why, Nate. (laughs) Maybe it's the international hey man, border Gump thing. Gump. I don't know. I, it might also be that you have to go through the Yukon. <laughs> Probably. Um, Home of the goat. Dylan Cousins. Continue. <laughs> and Simon Isabel. I th- Thank you. I thought you were going to talk Welcome. about one of our players. I was getting there. Niagara and Robert Morris have a home and home, both seven o'clock games at Niagara on Friday at Robert Morris Saturday. Canisius heads down to West Point, seven o'clock for both games there, Friday, Saturday. Battle of the bottom feeders. Uh, AIC has a non-conference game Saturday night against Vermont uh, in Springfield, so must be the Thunderbirds are away or off. And we have get a, your own ring. And we have a Saturday Sunday series between the Air Force Falcons and the Mercyhurst Lakers over in Erie, seven and four. Is Sa- wait this is Sacred Heart off this weekend? Yes. Yep. Thank God. Okay. So yeah, that <laughs> so, would be I feel so, so much better. Woo! Okay. But that means they'll still have that game in hand. So take speaking of that, taking a look at the the um current standings for Atlanta hockey. Uh Army's tank has yet to leave the base. They are still at dead last. They do have a point now, though. They haven't won a game yet, but they have a point. 
Uh, Kinesis is brilliant to start to their title defense is putting them at 10th with only four <laughs> points in the standings. Um, I'm going to ride that one at the end of time. Yep. Uh, RMU currently resides in at ninth with six points. There is currently a one, two, three, four team tie for fifth with Air Force, uh, Niagara, Mercyhurst, and Holy Cross all having hang on, seven hang on. points. The thing with Holy Cross is that Air Force and Mercyhurst have four games in hand. Wow. Yep. Oh, jeez. Well, so, so, so Holy Cross got to stay down there. That's the thing. Yeah. Those other teams are probably those other teams are going to make up those games quickly. Here's the thing, though: games in hand only matter if you win them. True. So, uh, AIC is currently residing in fourth with nine, nine points. This is, I what I feel is the shock of the conference this year. Bentley is in third with twelve. Um, Sacred Heart is in second with sixteen points, and RIT still is in first after this weekend with seventeen points. Sacred Heart is only a game back, obviously, sorry, is a, a point back, and they have a game in hand on us. So that is going to be crucial going into the next month or so of games. Yeah. Kind of a, a full. I mean, a I lot of teams. Every, every the, team. The Sacred Heart, I think, is the, hand, So. Yeah. I mean, my thing right now, my thing right now looking at this is Army is garbage. I'm not even sure if Brian Riley can save them at this point because they are just like they're just off to a really rough start. Like it's it's not looking good. And to everyone else's glee, Kanisha's been pretty garbage also. So now yes, they've played an absolute nightmare level of out of conference games, but even still, like the games they've had in conference they haven't though. they've won what? Like They've, won, they've played they've won four. Two. They've played four non-conference games. They've just had so many weeks off. I don't get why. That's my thing. Well, they didn't play the first weekend, which I I kind of get because like you, you really you don't want to play Sunday your first week, so you only no. get most teams only played one no. game that weekend. But then they had the last weekend in or. Yeah, they had the last weekend in October off. So it's like, what are we yeah. doing? They didn't play a home game until last week. Also, or two that's going ago. That's gonna hurt them because they really haven't had time to gel yet, considering how many new guys they have right now. Like, yes, they've uh, had they, they they had that one home series that they did win, or they split during, I think I, I think was what happened. Are you ready um, for this? After they play Army, their farthest away game until January 26th when they go to Air Force is Mercyhurst. That's wild. They don't have a true like road game. Like Mercyhurst is a one, it's a one game. They don't have a true road game until the end of January. And then even then, their only other road games after that are Robert Morris and us. That's wild. They're they're playing a lot of hockey at Harbor Center. Too bad nobody's going to be there to watch it. Yep. Having like deja vu to hearing people complain about SU basketball schedules (laughs) and how they never (laughs) play away from New York. Um, So we unfortunately do not play this weekend, the men, sadly. Um, But before we transition to to the ladies, there was another thing this week that came out today that was honestly quite surprising, and that was the USCHO poll. I think a lot of us figured that we were going to drop out of the top 20 after dropping Saturday, and that was not the case. RIT is still ranked number 20 in the country. So, Well, I kind of look at it this way, too. Like The couple teams in front of us, like Duluth got swept by North Dakota. Penn State only took two of six against Michigan State, and Ohio State got swept by Notre Dame. So realistic, and the teams behind us didn't do much either. So realistically, how do you take us out? I mean, I I also think you have to look. <laughs> I also think you have to look at the Saturday game that we played and look at the like. If you look at the numbers we put up, it speaks for itself. We played like a ranked team. We just ran into a goaltender that wasn't going to give anything up. I think I think that's honestly what kept us in. 
Like we dominated them all weekend. It was very evident from watching play and looking at numbers and whatnot. Saturday just turned into, we just couldn't score. Like their goalie they, was just on crack. We couldn't mm-hmm. score. They brought two teams in that weren't that weren't ranked before ahead of us in Notre Dame and St. Cloud. Yeah, and Penn State fell to eighteen from seventeen. So, I mean, I think it's also a case of I uh, I feel like the poll voters sort of don't know what to do with those last couple of places in the poll right now. Right. Right. And with the sheer number of poll voters, too, the bottom can go a lot of different ways. I mean, six different teams got first place votes this this week. Like, what? (laughs) BC and Denver both lost this weekend, so North Dakota and Wisconsin jumped them. Providence stayed where they were at five, but they're eight, one, and two. They're really good. Minnesota stayed where they were. Quinnipiac went from 10 to 7. Maine went from 13 to 9. Hey, we got a – if RIT stays in the rankings next week, we got a top 20 matchup at GPC. That's That'll be fun. Love really it. fun. For only the second time ever, which is kind of nuts. <laughs> but it makes <laughs> sense since we don't really get ranked all that often. We will, however, be getting to that series next week because we are now going to transfer over to the ladies. Uh, the women's hockey team had off this weekend. Uh, we did see them on Saturday. They were collecting donations for I forget what it was because someone was yelling in my ear when they were announcing it. Um, so that was fun getting to see those guys ro- roam around. Um, as everyone also knows from the video we dropped today, uh, we did interview Jordan Marchese, our first interview of the season. Uh that was probably the most fun interview we've ever done. So if you guys want to see how fun that was, head on over to uh, YouTube and everywhere else, and it'll be up and you can find it. Um, it's the longest one, too. We went for almost an hour with Jordan because she was just loving life. It was great. Um, that being said, I'm going to give it to Dan, and we're going to go over scores around the league for CHA this past weekend before we talk about our upcoming matchup. Despite the Tigers being off, the Tigers won. Because Princeton swept Mercyhurst. <laughs> That's oh. awful. <laughs> that was awful. That was a good transition, Dan. You can pop for that, Dan. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what, Nate? Get a sense that of humor. Was, that was a tough one. <laughs> Four three for Princeton Friday. Five one Saturday. And Nate didn't like the joke. Nah, that was bad. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, this coming week, because those were the only two games in the league. Um, this coming week, Syracuse brings Lindenwood to town, uh, six and two Friday Saturday, and Mercyhurst brings Penn State up to Erie, seven and two. And the one other matchup in the league is ours. Uh, ladies head down to, I almost said Mercyhurst. That's not what the M stands for. It's <laughs> Robert Morris. <laughs> Moon Township, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so real quick, before, before we look at RMU, I want to go over the current standings for CHA just so we kind of know where we stand going into the weekend. Um, as we said before we, before we restarted the recording, uh, Syracuse has yet to win a conference game after four of them, so they have no points. Lindenwood is currently fifth with two points. RIT and Mercyhurst are both tied for third with four points total. Robert Morris is in second with six points, and Penn State is currently in first with eight. Every team in the conference has played four conference games, so nobody has any games in hand with anyone as of yet. After this weekend, I'm pretty sure that will be the case. But nope. that's right now, not how that works. Nope, field. that's not how that works. All six teams. Six teams. Oh, all six. I'm sorry. I, for some reason, <laughs> blanked. I didn't hear you say Penn State. I don't know why I We're that. playing the team that came back this weekend. I said Penn State, not Robert Morris. <laughs> But, but my point is, Robert you Morris, know there are six series. in the league now. So you know I'm kind of scrolling Dan, through the major. I don't know. I'm scrolling um, through the calendar, and it almost looks like there will never be a point where anybody has games in hand on anybody. 
good. That's Love that. Good it skin. looks. Oh, it, this is amazing. Oh my <laughs> god, dude! Props to a row. That's there is not a party. single time where anybody in the CHA will have games in hand on anybody. That Love that. Beautiful. Love that. <laughs> oh yes. my god! The yes. power of even numbers. <laughs> God, I missed Robert Morris. <laughs> yeah, I don't miss him on the men's side. But Eleven teams. Um, this hey, series eleven teams fix our playoff format, right? Because <laughs> I like that playoff format. I know you hated it, but I like. I hated um, it. Um, this this series this weekend for us is going to be interesting. I think mostly just for the fact of, again, RMU's back. It's exciting to be playing them again, but also let's see what they're made of. Like. They've given us a taste already of what it is they can do, but let's see what they're made of. I mean, they've been... I, I, they've I was been telling good. Dan before you got on, JJ, I, I don't know what to think about them. Like, if you look at their schedule, right, they've... They split with Union, who we swept, right? Mm-hmm. They swept St. Anselm, who... Whatever. They got swept by Princeton, who's obviously really good. They got swept by Clarkson, who we know is good. But they only yes. lost by and then one they split in the with second Mercy. game. Yeah. Right. They could have won that game. They got blown up by Mercyhurst, and then they beat them the next night. <laughs> and then they swept Syracuse. So it's like, I, I don't know what to think. And I feel like we, we kind of know what our team is at this point. You know, gritty. You know, gonna, you know, not gonna give up on anything. Resilient. Yeah, and we have literal brick walls for goaltenders. But like, you look at Robert Morris, and it, I mean, it looks like it, they don't have any trouble putting the puck in the net, but their goaltending just leaves something there, something on the table. And I know there's some scores in there that kind of skew that, like the nine goals they gave up to Mercyhurst, but. I mean, I don't know. I, this there, is going to be a just, series that nothing's going to surprise me because we don't we don't know team. we don't know. They're just a wild card team right now. That's all it is. I mean, their one goal he's got a nine one two save percentage, but she's not the one that gave up the nine goals. So it, if she's playing, she'll be. It'll be a little bit harder to score a goal, but. I don't know. I think this weekend should be more about us. Because we're off this past weekend, and we're off next weekend. There is no excuse to not go 100% for 120 minutes this weekend and come home with four points. It's possible. It's very possible. When was the last time we could say that? Oh, my God. Go on the road and get four points in a conference game? (laughs) It's been a minute. It's about and a bit. I think it, it. I don't know. I got nothing. Madison, I, I'm kind of in the same boat. Like, I, I, too good. Yeah, too good. I, is she? A, is she I, a I, I just look at this student. Like, I, I better check before I say yes. But I think Please. so. I was going to say, she's uh, a junior. Nope, yeah, she's a junior. She's their, she's their <laughs> so captain, bad. and she's a junior. And she's from California? She is the, it's the hike from here and from there. I really hope that she's from San Jose. I really hope she's not a Sharks fan just for her sake. Is she related to Wayne? Primo? I, Did we ever figure that out? I don't remember. There, there were quite a few, quite a few that played for Syracuse that had ties to NHLers, though. Yeah. Do do do, Madison Primo, because that would explain why she's from San Jose. Welcome to Nate has better NHL trivia knowledge than JJ and I. Well, I don't know if Wayne ever played for San Jose. That that'll tell us. 
while Nate's going down that rabbit hole, I want to go down a slightly different one that relates to Robert Morris. Um, it, a cool little, uh, I, I missed this last week, a cool little coming together of CHA programs uh, in the Saturday game between RMU and Syracuse. RMU hosted a Sticks Together game. Uh, Sticks Together is a, a nonprofit that was founded by Syracuse player Sarah Thompson uh, to bring hockey to, to underprivileged areas of the world. Um, I believe their next trip is set cool. to go to the Philippines. And you couldn't cool. have written it any better. Who scored the first goal in that game? None other than Sarah Thompson. That's kind of that's awesome. That's awesome. Gee, she can be um, Keith Primo too. When is her birthday? Are you still on this? Like, dude, I'm still give it on up. It. No. Keep talking. Um, before you, but wait, before you start getting mad about her. Um, I was going to say, I, this game is a wild card to me. I don't know what to expect from Robert Morris because, like, like just like Nate said, like, th- nothing has showed us who they are just yet because they've gotten wiped, but they've also been competitive. So, like, I don't really know. Like, December 23rd, it, it, She's totally related. Wayne yeah. Primo was in San Jose like in 2002, 2003. Yeah. Absolutely. It's definitely very much a, definitely. a possibility for us to get it. Dude, if you look at the recording of JJ's face right now on Zoom, he's not his mouth is not moving, but he's talking. <laughs> what is but you were moving? <laughs> oh, it literally says on Who, me? her elite prospects page her father is Wayne Primo. Oh, I went to freaking hockey DB. That that should teach me. And her uncle is Keith Primo. I was saying, Keith. And there's your mistake. <laughs> they were both good. Sorry. Um, Wayne Primo, former Sabre. Continue. Uh, it wouldn't be a Hey Corner Crew podcast without us going totally off the rails. Okay, at least this was somewhat related. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I was determined to figure this out before the podcast was over. I'm was so it? glad I did. Was it worth it to you to have to go through all that trouble to going to the wrong website to find everything? Yes, because <laughs> Wayne Primo was a first round draft pick of the Buffalo Sabres. So yes. <laughs> um, Caden Primo is his but nephew. He's... He played at Northeastern. He's currently, I believe, he still plays for Laval. Oh, Laval. Yeah, he still plays for Laval. We lit him up at homecoming one year. <laughs> uh, let's do predictions real quick before we, we wrap it up. Nate's not even interested anymore. He's, Nate's just like, no, nah, I'm good. I, 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 am, this is, I do this on a daily basis. Wayne Primo's my new one today. <laughs> hey, this is a good puck doku. Go this is a good puck doku. God almighty. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to say sweep also. I, 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 I think we're going to go in there. <laughs> Twice. Mount still isn't moving. <laughs> did you say sweep? He did. <laughs> okay, we need to end this podcast before JJ breaks himself. I did say, sw- I did say sweep. Yes, I don't understand oh my this. My, We're putting better four, JJ in like, here, dude. My connect, <laughs> dude. <laughs> JJ, wrap it up. <laughs> I don't know if he can anymore, Nate. Oh, Keith Primo's nephew is Dalton Smith. I have his Amherst jersey. <laughs> did we lose JJ completely? I, I think we did. Oh, great. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Hey, there he is. 
Dude, my internet connection is literally at full strength, and this keeps happening. I don't know what's going on now. All right, wrap it up. <laughs> All right, we're going to wrap it up. I'm doing this yeah, very quickly. <laughs> Zoe, Zoe, Zoe gets through some extra editing today. All right. So. Oh, no. No, we're leaving. All <laughs> <laughs> we, oh, have fun editing that junk with you guys going side by side. It ne- You never disappeared it on ne- my screen. You never disappeared on us. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh, all right. Yeah, oh, JJ, you don't like funny. this. His, uh, his, um, his Wayne Primo's son, Mason, is in the night system. Plays for Henderson. Yes. Oh, for he has Silver two Knights? points in Dude, the they six got games. Some jerseys. I, I need to get. Uh, I, I no, need to get he, one of those. Cause... He played with. He played in a better jersey last year for the Savannah Ghost Pirates. Dude, the Ghost Pirates have a cool looking logo. I love their colors. All right, wrap it up. I can't wait for Carter Wilkie to play for them one day. Um, that that's Nate's all time nightmare. He goes to Vegas. <laughs> no, it'd be worse if he or went Toronto. to Toronto. It'd be way worse if he went to. The yeah, Leafs. I was say, to- it'd be Tor- Toronto and then Vegas number two. All right, so wrapping it up. Thank you for watching. If you have not already, uh, follow this absolute travesty of a podcast on everything. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel. <laughs> you're, you're welcome for that one. <laughs> now JJ's frozen. That was too good. That was way too good. Um, there he goes again. <laughs> somebody else do the outro. It's going to keep cutting me out. Uh, subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Somebody um, else join the Discord. Follow us on Instagram. Uh, everybody, have a great night. Go Tigers and go Bills. <laughs> JJ's internet banned him. <laughs>